a lot of people might be wondering, you know, what do you eat off grid? So today I'm going to uh, record everything I eat plus what I do around here. It's going to be a pretty easy day. Um, I got a couple things I want to plant. I'm going to be here all day on the farm just working and hanging out. Uh, so let's go see. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go pick some lemongrass. On the way to get the lemongrass, this hair caught my eye. All these red leaves are new growth. So this this is a lychee. And as you can see, it's really happy, which is good, good feedback for us. When we put this, this garden in, we were staying back right back here and, and under a tarp. But now we're way up in the front. And we're actually going to build a road through here, a driveway. So this garden has to get moved. The good thing is all this stuff can be moved pretty easily. The uh, spinach in here, it, it grows from cutting. The lemongrass grows from division. There's some basil that also grows from cutting. So everything we could use and then replant and it's, it works out really good. So all you do to uh, harvest this, to replant it. Just pull it out. To prepare the lemongrass to get planted, you want to cut off a lot of it, like that. The idea is like it doesn't have much roots, so it shouldn't have much leaves. The core model is um, as above, so below. So um, each one of these, though, like then you take all the dead off, and this is what you plant. Now I'm just gonna take some of the nicer looking leaves, the ones that are brown, and just gonna boil them in a pot. I also put um, a little bit of ginger in there. Caffeine level is five. Which I guess is high for tea, but it really doesn't even compare to coffee, so it's not too bad. And also sugar. I'm going to show you what I eat today, but I also want to show you what the plants eat. It's pelleted chicken manure. So it's just poop. They like to eat poop. So, just going to give them a little bit. They look hungry, so I'm going to feed them. A good place to put the lemongrass is around your garden beds. This will create like a, a barrier for all other weeds so that they don't come in. You want to space the lemongrass like a foot apart from each other. Also, I think it's good for um, pest to keep the pests out. They don't like the smell. Uh, this one back here, I've already surrounded the perimeter of it. And the ones I just picked this morning, I'm going to put down here on this garden bed. I really like the placement of this one. It's like in between the log and the rock. It's kind of off the ground, but it's like an experiment. I think it'll grow well. I put some dirt in there for it. These really don't need any fertilizer. They just need dirt. So what I'm gonna do is put like one scoop of dirt 
around and then just plug them in. There's no dirt here, so that's why I have to add dirt. Otherwise, you could just put them in the ground, dig it up a little, and just pop them in. Add the mulch around. And that's it. You're done. Easy. It's about 8 o'clock now. I'm not really hungry yet. I'm going to do a bunch more work on the farm. And then I'll see you for lunch. So, 10 o'clock now. Going to have breakfast slash lunch. I just finished uh, weed whacking. I used about two gallons, or not two gallons, two uh, gas tanks full of the weed whacker. And as I was weed whacking, my neighbor came over, gave me this. He said it was a Thai squash, and it's fully mature, so the seeds inside will I'll be able to plant, which is really cool. I'm excited. I've been wanting to get my hands on one of these for a while. So it was nice of him to bring it over. For lunch, we're going to have papaya. I would have more papaya, but this is the only ripe one. I got some apple bananas. If I'm hungry after I eat all this, I'll probably get some more apple bananas. But I also got some lychees too. These are kind of like a treat because they're they're pretty expensive this time of year. They're it's the beginning of the season, so they charge like three fifty. But mid season they're like two dollars a pound. So that's what I'm gonna eat for lunch. Much better than Cavendish. Even though sometimes I get sick of these too. That's why we've planted many varieties. There's about a hundred different varieties here on the island. And we we got maybe like ten of them. So much more than just the apple banana here. I don't know about you, but I always like to save whatever I like the best for last. That way it just leaves good aftertaste, feel more satisfied. I don't know, could be just me, who knows. But I want to mention, all this fruit costs about $5, which really kills me to have to pay for this stuff when I'm growing all of it. <clears throat> but, you know, we got to be patient. We just We just started out here, so in about a year... We'll have more papaya than we know what to do with. We planted like 60 of them. They're all looking really good. You know, they're growing well. We got like 20 bananas. Those will be the staple fruits because they're year-round. They're not seasonal. So you, you get bananas and papayas year-round. Something like the lychee, you'll have to wait. You know, once a year you'll get it. We, uh, we only have two lychee trees. You know, maybe in the future we'll get more. But, uh, those take, take quite a while, too. Maybe, like, in three to five years we might have lychee. So that'll be pretty cool. Well, I'm going to get back to work now. i got a little project I'm going to start. I'm going to make a trellis for some long beans. And I also have this perennial lima bean that I'm going to plant. This perennial lima bean can live up to six years. So for six years, I'm going to be able to walk out of my kitchen, grab some lima beans, and cook them for dinner. And that's what permaculture is about. You want to do the least amount of work and get the most in return. So <clears throat> the spot that I'm going to put the lima bean, I was actually growing some cucumber. 
And I found out shortly that cucumber does not do good here. I got one cucumber and it actually had worms in it too. So, you know, it's not, they don't do good here. So you want to plant things that do well in your area. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to film a video about the importance of like picking what to grow in your yard. Because we want to do the least amount of work and get the most in return. And that's what permaculture is all about. So, you know, we want more time to do things, you know, other things that we like. As much as I like gardening, I'd, I'd like to ride my bike more, you know. And, you know, the most fun part about gardening is probably just harvesting the food anyway. So the uh, trellis is done. It came out real nice. And it was free, actually. The uh, material I got from a tag sale, they were giving it away. And it's pretty expensive. This stuff is used to, um, when they pour concrete, they use it for rebar. So it's a really good material. It's galvanized. Uh, I use galvanized nails, so it's going to last. And now all I got to do is I'm going to plant along the bottom. I'm going to put long beans in the middle. I'm going to put yams on each end, which I guarantee most of you have never even had a yam. I never had. I never even knew what one was until one day at class. You know, a true yam, they grow huge. They're like 30 pounds. And they're not sweet at all. It's just like a regular potato uh, flavor. And the other thing is they grow up like on trellises. Whereas sweet potatoes, they're like a ground cover. They, they crawl. So that's interesting. I, I actually got a hold of two of them. Somebody at class was giving them away. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to plant those, see what happens. And the other thing I might throw in is some lima beans. I have a different kind. One of them is a Christmas lima bean. This one's just a red one. But check out these uh, cucumbers. They don't look too good. So I'm going to replace those with the, the lima bean. It's about 12 o'clock now. Getting a little hungry. This is the only packaged food I'll probably eat today. But... I'm addicted to them. What can I say? Funny story about the cool mint flavor. Paulina absolutely hates them. She says uh, that it's like brushing your teeth. <laughs> but anyway, she's reading this article and it was like the top 20 or 10 favorite or best uh, Cliff Bar flavors. And she's reading them and reading them. She gets to number one and guess what? It's cool mint. <laughs> I told her it was good. She, you know, I don't know. She just doesn't like them. It's 221. Five bananas. Alright, so I just got all this, uh, all the work done that I needed to do for today. What I usually do for dinner is I'll cook rice and I'll go around the yard and see what's, you know, what's available for me. Today, I think there's a lot of string beans, so I'm going to grab those. And then maybe some katuk, too. Lots of string beans. This here is the new garden bed we made. It's filled with, like, really good soil. That's why these string beans are doing so good. That's the most string beans I've got out of all the patches I've planted and they just started going off even if you think maybe you don't have a green thumb you should try string beans they're like probably the easiest thing to grow and you get a lot out of them they're really productive so give them a try and I think you'll like it and there's nothing like fresh string beans you know you get frozen they're not good or canned they suck but Fresh string beans, you could do cold salads with them. You could make, put them in the rice that I'm about to make. You could do that. Instead of the katuk, I got this Okinawan spinach. I forgot, I just made a video and I did a demonstration on how to plant it. So I have all these leaves left over. And I also have some Cuban oregano, which it's really tastes good and it's, it's really pretty too. 
Also, I'm going to add this carrot, this uh, purple sweet potato, and I'll make a little cucumber and tomato salad. I'm going to cook this stuff, throw it in the pot with the rice, and I'll make a little salad with this one. Nice and fresh. It's great when you know where your food came from. I mean, some of this I don't know because I bought the tomatoes and the cucumbers and the carrot and the potato. But I know where these string beans came from and the spinach and that oregano. I like cooking everything in one pot. I just cooked the brown rice for 45 minutes. Uh, then I added the, the vegetables in for the last 15 minutes. Much easier on the cleanup. Just one pot. And uh, also I, I put the that salad a little bit on top. I don't know, I like the way it tastes. With the one pot, like I usually, even if people make, you know, things with five, I don't know how many pots they make it with, but I usually end up mixing it all anyway. So, just do one pot. It's easier. Mmm, really good. And the cucumber adds a little bit of a crunch. See the color on that purple sweet potato. I hope it's focusing. I bet you thought that bowl of rice was my last meal. Nah. I've been doing a lot of bike riding. I just rode 120 miles a couple days ago, so I feel like I'm still catching up on calories. These pancakes are unreal. They're so good. I got a recipe video that I'm going to link in the description. You got to try them. They're so good. Mm. Mm. One thing I forgot to mention about the dinner I had, the salad dressing for the cucumber and tomato was maple syrup and mustard mixed together. Might have been a little soy sauce, but I'm not sure. I forget. Because I mixed it uh, a couple days or a week ago. And in the rice and vegetables was like a Thai seasoning, just like a dry one. I just sprinkle on. So, just in case you care. But, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the last thing I eat today. So, thanks for watching. And, uh, see you later. Mm -hmm.